Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. So I am back in the forest and once again it's going to get dark I think at this point before the video is over. Uh, I don't mean this to happen, it just does. Um, I can't get out here any earlier to do these. But um, regardless, so I was in London this last weekend. I think a lot of you might have seen some of the videos I put up from there. Um, but it was my first time there. I, I've been for like a layover or two and gone for lunch like one a few tube stops up and gotten lunch from from the airport but not properly and this was my first time kind of having a few days to take it all in and I just want to give you my first thoughts now just a quick note as well that I was there covering the anti-lockdown protest and I have a video to do on that that's maybe a bit more cerebral or a bit more political and I will do that but for now, for now I just want to give my quick uh, quick thoughts on London itself um, and the first thing that struck me, so let's get into it, was how similar Dublin actually is to London. Because having not seen one, I didn't realise it quite as much as uh, it obviously is. So Dublin, for a long time, was the second largest city in the British Empire and was seen, you know, bigger and more significant um, than Liverpool and Manchester and all that, only second to London. And it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, called the jewel and the crown of the British Empire. So they invested vast amounts of resources into building this lovely Georgian architecture and all of this stuff, which to this day you can see in a huge portion of Dublin. Um, so when I got to London, it was almost a mini culture shock of its own that it was so similar. Um, I'm going, this is the first time I've really been abroad where it's so similar, it, it's, it's disorienting almost. Um, because on one hand you have that architecture, it just structurally looks really like Dublin. And then on the other hand you have Starbucks, like Dublin and everywhere else and McDonald's and all that and then on the other let's say third hand you have um, a multicultural multi-ethnic kind of po um, population just like large parts of Dublin these days so there's nothing different besides maybe a black cab here or there but it's so similar and that was remarkable of its own because that's that's something unique almost even though it's not something unique at all it's kind of double uh, meaning to that I suppose but that it just it for the first my first day there I was like this is weird, that that thing of its uh, in itself. Um, the second thing was of course, um, the the I'll call it social distancing, the alienation between people in a city of ten odd million people, the lack of eye contact and all of that, right? And of course, like I'm not a country bumpkin and nor am I a globe trotting jet setter. I'm like your average travelled person. I've been to big European cities, big bustling African cities. Um, Manhattan, you know, that's that's obviously one of the, I think London and New York um, are the biggest cities probably in the West, unless you count Moscow. So I'm, I'm not a total stranger or innocent to it, uh, but yet it still struck me, you know, it still got me. And Irish people are notoriously, almost clownishly needing or needy for conversation you know and when we're abroad we famously will like get offended when people aren't up to our level of idle small talk and random public places and stuff like that and yet still you know it's I still fell into it because I'm I, and it's just I, I like to think that I would never get jaded with that annoyance that I would always help at a healthy level find that strange I don't want to really ever find it normal and you know it's in a way it is normal because when you live in even in Dublin to an extent but much more so London if if naturally if you live in a place like this what what seems odd and alien to you in the first day you will be exhibiting yourself months later because it's like natural selection you just have to behave like that to to stay sane in any way sane in a place like that you have your circle of friends you have your life you have your roots and everything else is VR because otherwise I think you would actually go insane um, and yet it still kind of got to me um, and I'm going to tie that in with my second point so I'll pause that and go to my second point and then bring them together. The second thing I noticed is, or third third thing I noticed, was omnipresent state propaganda. And again, I've lived in Dublin. It's a city of a million plus people. It's no village and been abroad and stuff like that, other big cities. And yet it was in London was standout, head and shoulders above everything else except perhaps Manhattan. Um, in that the state is everywhere. I don't mean, I'm not some libertarian, but just you can feel it. You can kind of feel it in your hindbrain because it only occurred to me when I got home. When I got out, I, I, my hindbrain started speaking up. 
because I was busy going places, le- finding my route and stuff like that, I didn't have time to think about it at the time. But in hindsight, it's so oppressive. You can feel it above you, cameras, you can feel the cameras everywhere, police everywhere, all sorts of kind of uh, state personnel everywhere to kind of watch and mind the place and watch you in a certain kind of sense, not to be paranoid. And then m- more notably, and again, this only occurred to me afterwards, was that for that couple of days, I was constantly, constantly, more than Dublin or uh, by a long shot, seeing state propaganda, um, state messaging. So like you're, you're, you just look right and, or you look left, sorry, and see a sign that says, uh, be happy, calm down, don't be mentally ill, you know, something like that. Or it meant being mentally ill is okay. It's okay not to feel okay, this stuff, right? And then you have um, COVID-19 stuff, you know, uh, stop the spread. And then you have on the tube, you have poems, these kind of random poems there, which are meant to kind of like, you're meant to look up at them and read them in the miserable kind of tube, I suppose, and gather some meaning and be enlightened and relaxed and calmed down by them. But again, that's a kind of a state product almost, so it doesn't feel right. It's not like reading a nice poem. So even everything's made into the state message that's on the wall. It's coming from above. It uh, See something, say something, sort it. See it, say it, sort it. This kind of anti-terrorism message, which again is kind of, you know, strange, obviously, and unsettling. So you're getting that from the ear spoken to you while you're looking at all these signs, and then you get out of a tube and you see it elsewhere, elsewhere, and you, it's just coming at you from every direction, this intense, heavy state. Um, and that's, I just want to tie it back to that alienation and isolation of being in a big city, no social kind of uh, um, warmness or whatever, is that on my on Sunday, I was a little bit hungover and kind of wandering because I was, I was just waiting for my flight later that afternoon. So that kind of um, social isolation just you get from being alone in a random public place was particularly tuned up for me you know it's like not not really feeling it not really enjoying that aspect of things um and uh, i looked down at the ground after seeing 50 different messages telling me not to be mentally ill and telling me to live my best life and telling me a poem and telling me to not be attacked by a terrorist and telling me all this stuff um and then i looked down at the ground and i see this obviously anti-covid 19 message and it's a but it's just it was there was a dark irony to it really it was too fitting you know um it's a love heart and inside it it said socially distance um and i just i was like oh that is dark and grim um socially distanced like it wasn't some graffiti artist that was a state painted message part of this machine of the city um uh another point i've lost count of them now but is um kind of the machine of the place like it has to it's it is just one big economic machine or zone bolted onto a country at this point ethnically it's a minority english city um and then you have all these different layers of kind of almost globalism via people via companies and yet the machine chugs on and it's almost a bit worrying you know that it functions it functions very well as a machine that does and it can the whole world could in perpetuity function like that but you have the social and state effects that I've already mentioned. It's not nice to live in, um, ideally, and yet it functions. And that's kind of scary almost. You're like, this place functions really, really well at a systematic and mechanic level, but in human form, not great. Um, and just as a caveat for all the Londoners or people who like London, I'm sure there's all these different parts that I haven't seen like I said, this is first impressions and just looking at it from one view. Um, but it's that machine. And you have all these social layers. You know, you have this kind of largely multi-ethnic underclass as well. Um, even in the... I'm sure it's much more in the south of London and stuff like that. But even in the centre, you have little amounts of it. The kind of London in it, tracksuit, kind of wandering around, hustling kind of crowd like that. And then you have this massive layer, especially in the centre, of course, of elites, like elite um, like a Danish like 19 year old girl who's living there and then you have all these other kind of ones you have a large portion of like everything from the like Morocco to kind of Indonesia this kind of like central belt of like you're not quite sure is that person Indian or Middle Eastern or North African or Malaysian you know that kind of general part of the world there's a lot of them the rich ones who are there and then a, a lot of yeah Europeans as well but I 
of course, a lot of it is breeding too, because it's the parents sending them off there to get that education, to get that experience, but also probably to marry in together. And so you see this global elite of almost millennia, or yes, millennials, who are there kind of working, kind of not, doesn't matter, rich parents. Um, and they're, But yet they're all very similar. They're almost more similar to each other than they are to their own respective na- nations. And London is such a central hub for that, I've learned or observed, much more than Paris or Berlin or Dublin. Much, much more. You know, London stands out that way. Um, and I just found it, I don't know, I don't like it, basically. Call me a class warrior or something, but it's just weird. And it's just, it's it's worse again when it's multi-ethnic and multicultural, multinational, because it's kind of like, it's not even your own nation's wor- uh, elite class that you can kind of isolate and hold to account and stuff. It's this global elite. And London is a perfect city for them. Again, this machine that is so, and I've never been to the rest of England, but I, I would imagine so detached from, from England itself that it's almost worrying. Like if I were a British nationalist, I would look at London and go, what are we going to do about this behemoth of a machine that seems like it's just gone past the point of any being of any nationality? It's its own country. Um, so I don't know, you know, um, yeah, that's a bit of a pickle that in a way, as an Irish person, Dublin is what it is, but it's not quite at that level. Um, but yeah, um, I have a few anecdotes and stuff like that. I'm probably not going to get into them, but that 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 kind of elite class, and a lot of them are English too, and they almost mix in more with that multinational elite set than they ever would identify with their own country. Um, so you have this kind of hodgepodge, and it's just it's it is it's it is impressive, and it's you know it's quite a thing to behold to just watch it play out in front of you, and like I say, function, and yet it's probably not a good thing. Um, got company i think is that the blair witch we shall soon find out hopefully if she comes and attacks me she'll still upload this anyway for me but um but yeah um that's kind of my thoughts on london so stay tuned and give us an old sub as well um i think that's pretty much it take it easy and see you lads